Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to part three of my series here explaining keyword abilities. If you're here, that means you've already watched the first two. But if you didn't, I'll link them in the description and I'll leave a link to the playlist once this is all done. But let's just jump right into it today. Starting off from Dark Steel, we've got Modular. Modular is a keyword ability that causes a permanent to enter the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters. When that permanent dies, its controller may put a plus one plus one counter onto an artifact creature for each plus one plus one counter the permanent had on it when it died. So you're essentially moving plus one plus one counters around when the creature dies. It does work with things like doubling season, so if your modular creature dies and you move the counters to something else, it'll get double those counters. Next up we've got Sunburst. Introduced in 5th Dawn, and I'm pretty sure it never made it past that, Sunburst appears on both artifacts and artifact creatures that puts charge counters and plus one plus one counters respectively on the card when it enters the battlefield. The number of counters is equal to the number of different colors of mana used to cast a spell. That's why I'm pretty sure it didn't leave that set, because, like, that's really limited. But next we've got Bushido, or Bushido, however you want to pronounce it. Introduced in Champions of Kamigawa, Bushido simply is a triggered keyword ability that makes creatures bigger if they block or are blocked. Simple. Uh, I don't... No, because Bushido has their own numbers assigned to them, so I don't think it stacks if you have multiple instances of Bushido. I could be wrong on that, but regardless. Next up, we've got Soul Shift. Also introduced in Champions, Soul Shift allows a player to return a spirit card of mana value no greater than the Soul Shift number from the graveyard to their hand when the Soul Shift creature dies. With the exception of Promise Kanushi, a human druid, all Soul Shift cards have a mana value one greater than their Soul Shift number. Next up, we've got Splice. Also, also introduced in Champions, Splice onto functions while the card is in your hand. It allows a player to essentially add the rules text of the card to another arcane spell they are casting. Since the card with Splice remains in the player's hand, it can later be cast normally or spliced again onto another spell. It's a lot, it's, it's not a, it's real, it's a pretty good ability actually, but it's really limited because you're only being, you're only able to splice it onto arcane spells. As far as I know anyway. Up next, we have Offering. This time introduced in Betrayers of Kamigawa, Offering is a keyword ability that allows a player to sacrifice an appropriate permanent to cast a card with Offering as though it had Flash and at reduced mana cost. It's pretty good in tribal decks of the respective nature, but the only downfall is that the patrons themselves are not that creature type, so that kind of, eh, it's still, they're still pretty good though. Next we've got Ninjutsu. One of the most popular mechanics out of Kamigawa, Ninjutsu represents the stealth of the ninjas by allowing a creature that attacks and isn't blocked to be exchanged with a ninja in the controlling player's hand, such that the ninja is attacking and unblocked instead of the original creature, which is returned to the owner's hand. You pay the ninjutsu cost when the creature is attacking, if it's not blocked. So you have to cast that during the declare blockers step if the creature is not being declared blocked. Next up, we have a very, very controversial ability, Epic. From Saviors of Kamigawa this time, save me from this damn block already, an Epic spell, which is a pretty ironic name, is copied in its controller's upkeep on every turn for the rest of the game. If it has any targets, the player may choose new targets for the copy. In exchange for this powerful ability, the player can't cast spells for the rest of the game. Since copies of a spell aren't cast, the epic spell's copies aren't affected. So, if you were to have an epic spell in your deck, you would definitely want to play it when you know you can win right there. And if you have things on the field that trigger off of it. Otherwise, it's a pretty, like, dead on board ability, because you can't cast anything else. If you ran in like a cycling deck, you could probably because you can't cast anything, but you can still active. Maybe I might build a deck around that. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Up next, we're venturing into Ravnica with Convoke. Convoke works by allowing a player to tap creatures rather than pay some of the mana cost of a spell. Each creature that's tapped pays for either one or one of the mana of one of the creature's colors. That was really convoluted to say. But you get it. 
Pretty simple ability. It's really great if you have creatures that care about being tapped. Next up, we've got Dredge. One of the most <laughs> well-known abilities in the game to this day, thanks to Modern. We're still hanging out in Ravnica. Dredge is a recursion mechanic where the owner of a card in a graveyard with Dredge can return the card to their hand by choosing to skip their draw and mill a number of cards. That number is written on each card with Dredge. What's broken about that ability is that you can dump things into your graveyard that you would want there for recursion effects. If you and if you have things that can like manipulate the top of your deck, you can dredge what you want into your graveyard. And then if you have something, yeah. It's I may do a separate video on dredge because there's a lot to it. It's a really awesome mechanic. But next up, still in rap we're going to be in Ravnica Cup for a little bit here. We got Transmute. Transmute works by allowing a player to pay the transmute cost of a given card, discarding the card, then searching the library for a card with the same converted mana cost as a discarded ca card. It could be really good if you're looking for something specific. Next we've got Bloodthirst. Introducing Guild Pact, Bloodthirst works by putting a number of plus one plus one counters on a permanent, so far only creatures, as it enters the battlefield. If an opponent has been dealt damage that turn. Note that it's any type of damage, not just combat. Next we've got Haunt. Also in Guild Pact, Haunt works by allowing a permanent enter the battlefield ability or spell effect to go off twice. More precisely, it allows a card to be exiled from a graveyard, haunting a creature. And when that creature dies, a triggered ability of the haunting card is put on the stack and allows a second usage of the card. And it kind of so it kind of works like an aura but it can't be interacted with because it's in exile. Next, we've got Replicate. Still here in Guild Pact, Replicate works by putting copies of a given spell onto the stack for each time you pay the Replicate cost. It's really broken if you have like infinite mana. Next, we've got Forecast. On to Dissension now. Forecast is an activated ability that a player can only use when the card is in their hand and only during their upkeep. What the individual card does is usually related to what it does normally, either a scale down effect of the spell or something that the sp supports the spell once it's cast. It's not a terrible ability, but it's very limited. Next we got Graft. One of my favorites from this block. Still in Dissension, Graft works by allowing a creature with Graft to move a plus one plus one counter from itself onto a creature that just entered the battlefield. It does trigger cards like Doubling Season, I think it's Lana War Reborn, that has Graft. So, it's not just creatures, there is a land that has it too. Now, we're on to Cold Snap. Recover is a keyword ability that allows a player to return cards with the ability to their hand by paying the card's recover cost when a creature next goes into their graveyard from the battlefield. However, if they do not pay the recover cost, then the card is instead exiled. So it could be, like, it's got potential, but eh. Next up, we have a better ability known as Ripple. Also introducing Cold Snap, when a player casts a spell with Ripple, the triggered ability allows a player to reveal a given number of cards from the top of their library and cast all the cards that were revealed this way with the same name as the spell without paying their mana cost. The rest of the cards are then put on the bottom of that player's library. And you might be thinking, yeah, your I'm an EDH channel. How is that good? <laughs> Rats. Also, slime against humanity. Next, we have one of my favorite abilities of all time, Split Second. Introduced in Time Spiral, Split Second is a static ability that doesn't allow any players to put any spell or activated ability on the stack as long as the spell with Split Second is on the stack. See my priority video for a better explanation. And then finally, for part three, we've got Suspend. Also introduced in Time Spiral, Suspend is a keyword that represents three abilities. The first is a static ability that allows you to exile the card from your hand with a specified number of time counters, the number before the dash, on it by paying its suspend cost, lifted after, listed after the dash. The second is a triggered ability that removes a time counter from the suspended card at the beginning of each of your upkeeps. The third is a triggered ability that causes you to cast the card when the last time counter is removed. If you cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until you lose control of that creature. 
or in rare cases, you lose control of the creature spell while it's on the stack. I'll probably make a separate video explaining it eventually, because recently they eroded some of the rulings to that when the last suspend counter is taken off, you can choose whether to cast it or not. Like, it's good for someone who's waiting on you with a counter spell because they can see the card coming. So you can choose not to cast it and just have it go right to your graveyard and then they don't get to counter your spell. And then if you have a recursion effect, then you can do that later. So yeah, I'll probably make a separate suspend video, but that's going to conclude this list for part three. Uh, if you've made it this far into the series, thank you for joining me. Uh, these are really fun to make. I can't wait to complete this video. It'll be my first actual like video series that I'm doing. So I'm really excited to like go through it and get it done. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned. And without further ado, I bid thee farewell.